us to awaken in him, how will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate our lives ever more perfectly, how will he find us? Awake and ready. Please pray. Divine Mother, Divine Divine Mother. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Friend beloved God, Friend beloved God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Keshwar, Swami Sri Keshwar, Beloved Guru, Beloved Guru, Paramhansa Yogananda, Paramhansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, Gratefully and humbly we bow before you all. Gratefully and humbly we bow before you all. Give us the grace, Give us the grace to, be receptive channels, to be receptive channels that we may keep, that we may keep the, lamp of our hearts, the lamp of our hearts open and bright, open and bright receptive, receptive to receive your blessings. Receive your blessings. Fill, our minds with your wisdom, fill our minds with your wisdom. Fill our hearts with your love. Fill our hearts with your love. And fill our souls with thy ever new joy. With thy ever new joy. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Let's listen to these words from Affirmations for Self-Healing by Swami Kriyananda. This week's reading is Immortality. You are not your body. You are not your thoughts, your desires, your changing personality. Your body has a certain age, but you yourself have no age. Your body may may tire or become unwell, but you yourself, the fatigueless soul, cannot tire, can never know disease. Tell yourself always, I am a child of eternity. Don't be identified with your outward form, nor with change, but live in timelessness. It is our identity with change that creates the illusion of passing time. Feel that through all outward changes, you, the immortal soul, remain the same. Death itself will be but one more change. Be not identified with it. Then when death comes, you shall rise in eternal freedom. Now let's affirm together, first in a loud voice and progressively softer until we affirm it silently. I am a child of eternity. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit. I am the changeless spirit. At the heart of all mutation. At the heart of all mutation. I am a child of eternity. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit. I am the changeless spirit. At the heart of all mutation. At the heart of all mutation. And now in a normal speaking voice, I am a child of eternity. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit. I am the changeless spirit. At the heart of all mutation. I am a child of eternity. 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 I
thread of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit. And the heart of all mutation. Taking it even deeper silently. I am the thread of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit. And the heart of all mutation. Broadcasting, broadcasting it from the point between the eyebrows. Let's confirm it one more time silently. I am a child of eternity. I am ageless. I am deathless. I am the changeless spirit at the heart of all mutation. Now let's pray together silently. Wherever my body travels outwardly, let me feel thy changeless presence within. Wherever my thoughts take me, let them return always, like prodigal children, to find repose in me. Good morning, everyone. It's such a joy to be here. My name is Michael. Everyone knows me. This is Paul. Everyone knows Paul. <laughs> such a beautiful day. We'll do the reading from Grace of the One Life by Swami Kriyananda. This is the weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita. This week's reading is, What is it to fail spiritually? Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. The first passage is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25. Jesus tells the parable of the ten virgins, five of them wise and five foolish. They await their bridegroom, the Christ consciousness. The wise virgins keep their oil and their lamps, symbolic of their devotion, lit through the night. The foolish virgins place no oil in their lamps. These foolish ones are like the average devotee, going through the motions of outer ritual, but keeping no fire of love burning in the heart. When the bridegroom's coming is announced, the foolish virgins realize their mistake and hasten out to purchase oil. During their absence, the Christ consciousness comes and embraces those who have been awaiting him with devotion. The foolish ones, by their lackluster devotion, are not accepted by him. Watch, therefore, Jesus told his listeners. For you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. In Autobiography of the Yogi, Paramahansa Yogananda describes the foolish virgin consciousness he encountered in the Mahamandal Hermitage he stayed in as a young man in Benares. I was pleased, he wrote, that my new home possessed an attic where I managed to spend the dawn and morning hours. The ashram members, knowing little of meditation practices, thought I should employ my whole time in organizational duties. They gave me praise for my afternoon work in their office. Don't try to catch God so soon. This ridiculous hunt accompanied one of my early departures toward the attic. Later, during meditation, I felt lifted as though bodily to a sphere uncircumscribed. Thy master cometh today, a divine womanly voice came from everywhere and nowhere. This supernal experience was pierced by a shout from a definite locale. A young priest nicknamed Habu was calling me from the downstairs kitchen. Mukunda, enough of meditation. You are needed for an errand. The Divine Mother's words were not spoken for the benef benefit of that spirit, but that priest, the foolish virgins, but for Mukunda, the wise virgin. For this was the day his guru, Sri Yukteswar, came to him. Grieve not, friends, if you feel that you have been foolish. No error is forever. Someday, if you keep your lamp lit now, your opportunity will come. In the Bhagavad Gita, the sixth chapter, Krishna promises every devotee, Arjuna, None who works for self-redemption will ever meet an evil, evil destiny. Spiritual failure, though a deep disappointment, is always temporary. Eternal hellfire is but a projection of vindictiveness in the human mind. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. 
satsangs and meditation, to be able to spend the night and, and wake up and meditate together and chant and, and just have fun, and just to be able to have fun together and lighten up. I mean, it's, it's, it's priceless. There's nothing, and, and thank you, uh, Dharana, for getting the house, too. <laughs> so, okay. Whispers from eternity. I digressed a little bit. But I had to share the gratitude there because it's really something. Okay, so this is from uh, Paramhansa Yogananda, Whispers from Eternity. The reading I picked today is Demand for Union with the Almighty. O oh, Father, behold me through the pores of the sky, smile at me through the twinkling stars. Strengthen me through the sun, calm my feelings through the moon, caress me through the breeze, love me through my love, throb in me through my heart, breathe thine immortality through this mortal frame of mine, speak through my voice, help others through my hands, use my mind to inspire them, breathe through my breath. For within this fragile viol, thou alone canst sing thy complete eternal song. Well, that says a lot. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, when we had our, our the reading of affirmation of immortality, I, I can't help but think of Swami Kriyananda, Swamiji, um, because we were blessed to have him a number of years ago before he left the body, uh, staying in Los Angeles for about six months. And uh, so folks were very fortunate, we were very fortunate to spend a more, little more extra intimate time that was kind of unprecedented. And it was unprecedented, but what I was struck by was clearly as an older gentleman, he was in his mid-80s and needed help walking, but talk about that radiant, ageless joy. That, and it was so heart and mind opening that, and so much love poured from him. I mean, literally, I honestly, I could not go up and, I did speak to him, I got the nerve to ask him something. And, uh, I, I'll, I'll just say what I asked him, because I, I was asked to lead a meditation group, and, and, uh, and I said, sir, um, do you have any advice, <laughs> any suggestions? And he, he just looked very, looked right at me, and he just said, just be in love and devotion. You can't take one step forward on the spiritual path without awakening the natural love of the heart. That was all. He, he was just very, and that was like, don't yeah, keep it simple. You know? <laughs> stick with the heart. Stick. So when we have the uh, in this um, parable that Master has from the yoga, you know, yoga master interpreting it, um, we might say, hmm, interesting. The ten virgins, and uh, what is this about? And and the lamps, and and uh, well. Isn't the lamps, the, okay, well the lamps, let's we'll start with the lamps. The lamps represent the, the practices, the science, or, and, and also the rituals, the, 
the exter the things that the techniques that it could be the you could say the kriyas we've had our kriya initiates you it can be our meditation sitting down to meditate it could be at the temple it can be it could even be the satsang that the gathering we have it could be and it it doesn't regard irregardless of what side of the planet or what religion or it's it's the it's the form the and how we get sort of the how we go for is um that's Sabi Sabitri, a beautiful, amazing leading meditation teacher training, said we have the getting there and then the being there in um, meditation and other yogic techniques. So it's sort of the, the getting there, it's the it's the techniques we use. But the being there <laughs> is the the wick is represents the heart, he said, of the lamp. The but what is it that turns the light on? Heart, like the chakras, all the lights, they light themselves, all the doors do open themselves. And when that darkness disappears, like a bird, a dark bird fleeing, flying away, what opens the curtains? It's our love. It's it's that like what Swami G had, it's that it's that pure devotional love. And it's an uncritical love. It's like a childlike love. It's a love that doesn't hasn't, doesn't differentiate, you know, friend, foe, annoying person, fun person. It just loves. And clearly, this is a work in progress for many, myself, my, my, myself included. Um, but what that the light is that our, it's the devotion. And and what are these? What is it about this? These ten virgins. Well, the virgins. Yogananda said, why are they virgins? Because they represent the type, the, the qualities that are needed to awaken God within us, which is the, he would say, the more intuitive um, feminine quality, even though in truth, in essence, we're both need both and neither uh, male, female, um, but in essence, in the soul, but, but the quality, it's the quality and the and the willing, and you could say part of the art, the art, because art is intuitive. We have the science of Raja Yoga, and then we have the techniques, but then we have the art. We have to make it, keep the lamp alive in our hearts through our love. And that's what an artist does. They bring things alive, um, the art and heart. I mean, they're even the words are related. And the, so they're the, the, the part that where we have to open beyond the, the, just the techniques. And, and what are, who, why uh, this 10? Well, it's not exactly 12 disciples, the amount, but he said they represent the disciples. And, and, that, and so we could look at the, on a um, more binary black and white thing like shoot, you know, these, these five virgins blew it, they missed the boat and they're, you know, the master came, the Christ consciousness came and the Christ and they were, they were, um, there was a trap, maybe there was a trap door. They weren't, they weren't open, or, they were, they were, or he was getting a busy signal, as we say. Um, but, but think, on the other hand, this is for the, the disciple, that someone that's even that far, even if they fall, it's still, they're in the good, they're in the proximity <laughs> of the avatar. They're in like the proximity of Jesus still. It's not like every, any person that has no clue. They're still, so when Swamiji says also at the end of this reading, don't, basically don't, don't beat yourself up. You know, don't, 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 don't harm yourself being, punishing yourself anymore don't there's no need to do that to be overly harsh of ourselves or anybody we're all just as disciples just doing what we can do the best we can and you know it shows a lot of like just even in this little group it shows a lot of incentive just coming all the way over driving here that says a lot and and when but when that someone even gets close to even wanting to know god as yogananda said that that takes such that, you know, what Swamiji would say, even the way he would say it was such um, vitality, but it takes very good karma. And to even want to know God, to even want, just to even have that on the radar is a blessing. So 
when Krishna says, well, you know, if, if a good, sincere yogi or yogini falls, well, they will come back, and then they maybe they'll end up in a home of yogis the next time around, or they'll or they'll learn, and it's, there's a there's a process to it. Um, when Yogananda, shortly before he left the body, and he was dropped, he was letting the monks and nuns know. I mean, that he was he was giving them good clues. One of the direct disciples asked uh, Yogananda, and she said, well, what will we do when, when you're gone? You know, you're like the, the, like if it's like a beautiful, like jewelry, you're like the centerpiece, the, the opal or the gem in the center of our, of our everything, our whole, everything we do. You're like holding it together. And Yogananda said, when I'm gone, only love can take my place, be absorbed night and day in the love of God, and give that love to all. That's it. I mean, that's being like the good, the wise virgin, kind of in a nutshell. Um, and then that brings us to, well, what is it to fail spiritually? Um, the, the word fail, I mean, I, I can't, I always see the letter F like in school, like, <laughs> like um, and I didn't do that great in academics. I did good in art, though, um, and it's a creative writing. But, um, but to fail, to miss, to miss the point, maybe, to miss to not have as good reception, clear reception as we could have. Um, when he said, when Yogananda says this, it's wonderful, but when we say, how do I love God? You might say, how do I love something I can't exactly see? Or even I can't, I might feel, I might feel it in meditation, but we can't necessarily, it's how, how do we love something? I remember when I would come, was new in Ananda, I would say, love God, I said, okay, love God. You say, love God, love God, how do I love God? Uh, I could love people, I could love the guru, how do I love God? And, and well, that brings us to the Kriya, because <laughs> the Kriya gives us, it clears out the vrittis, those gnarled up karmic knots, and we start to feel our natural glimpses, you could say whispers of those etern eternity, and we can feel, we start to feel the little, the, the, the God, the sensitivity, the sensitivity comes there inside in the temple of the, our bodies, the inner plant. And we can start to feel God's presence, the love. It's like, wow, I feel different. I'm, I'm suddenly, I might, I'm, something is just different. I feel lighter. I feel more opening in the heart. My nervous system is settled down. I'm more present. I feel nicer, <laughs> more friendly. And, and these things happen. I mean, it, it really is. But then that alone, of course, is not enough, the, the techniques. Then we have, of course, we have the avatar. <laughs> we have the avatars. We have the ones liberated that are out of compassion back that come here and can take that by the hand. And, and when it's hard, can just say, please, I need help. Help, like what I think Narayan was sharing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Help. I just need help to guide me, I need, and what, they don't care how many times you ask, is what it is, it's the heart that is important. That's what the real, the thoughts, it's not so much the thoughts, it's the heart. It feels, that's the universal thing, and then when we can give love and devotion and gratitude and receptivity and humility, like a child, you know, they call like a disciple, like a chela, a child. And it's like the master's divine mother, sure, I'll help you. I want to help my child. I don't want my child to run away and not come back. Or I don't want my child to just stay in the room and close the door and put on their headphones or whatever they do these days. Um, I want the child, I want to be with the child. 
I want to know the child. I want the child to be free. I mean, a healthy parent only wants their child to be happy. That's what I understood, understand. And so they just want to help us to be free. And so the failure thing is um, missing the mark, but it's the human-made thing, as Swamiji said, uh, the hellish state is, is, the, is the maya. It's, it's the, the part that makes us feel discouraged. Master said that when we're discour- hard on ourselves, when we're discouraged, that's Satan, <laughs> Maya, you name it, is the delusion is, get, is working, doing push-ups then. It's like working really hard to get us, oh good, they're hard on themselves, I've got them. And, and we'll even um, quick tests, I mean at times things that when people that normally would know better, like disciples and might bang up against each other's personalities and egos but if we're staying in the love it's like a thread of gold we just keep moving through the labyrinth <laughs> just keep moving through the labyrinth and it'll we'll find our way through what are some of the other there's like the tangible thing like okay sure you might turn away or might get lukewarm Swamiji said one of the biggest obstacles is getting lukewarm in a devotion, getting kind of, I don't know if jaded is the word, but lukewarm and maybe indifferent. And, but that's okay, but what is it, what are the underlying things that might be causing that? Um, Some, and this is, this is like, it may be not even on the conscious level so much, but shame, I think come up shame like there's an acronym for shame should have already mastered everything by now <laughs> and and, um, and it's a process you know it's a process it's, it's like can only work with what where it is where we are and so we can take okay maybe my meditation my Kriya practice wasn't the most stellar today but I showed up I did some and I did some here before I went to bed and to keep Staying connected to not without it not in the black and white, but just it's just directional, and uh, this is just this is a playful thing. So just, but actually, my spouse Willie really was listening to a financial guy expert on um, investing and other things like that, and he was the guy, and it just it just I was meditating. I just came out and I went, whoa, wait, wait a minute, and I was thinking about in terms of master, and the guy was talking about. Most of you probably know the three little pigs story, mm-hmm. okay? Now, there was, the, the, the first pig um, had made a house of straw. And the straw, he thought, well, that might be enough to keep the big bad wolf. You could say the big bad Maya out or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so then he, you know, he says, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? And then he does a jig and plays his fiddle. And so he goes off, and so maybe there's not enough Maybe it's a learning, it's a process. Like, oh, okay, maybe I need to put more energy here to it. That's the thing. Okay, I'm going to get blown over. If then, of course, the big bad wolf puffs and he puffs and he blows the straw. Okay, down. So the next pig is a little more onto it. Well, I'm going to make my house out of twigs and sticks this time, a little stronger. Great. So he just builds and then he plays and parties, but the, the wolf comes and still blows it down. Third time, the practical pig makes a house out of bricks, and 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 he has a chimney. So when the the chim- wolf comes in, he he, he does it, he goes in the chimney and jumps out because there's fire. So the just it's just a playful way that it's a process of building that inner inner infrastructure and surrender. That oh okay more more effort is needed. That's all, or I just need to keep. And, and to put that energy, and that, in a sense, it's that really putting also the awareness that it's God, that a foundation of a rock, as they say, not of sand, that there, it's like, where is the real foundation? Where is, where is the, that the real part? And um, so, there's any other points? Okay, so that, that would be just that part. And then the other aspect would be going deeper. What might be another 
would be just going deep, deeper into the attunement, looking beyond the surface. Um, Taria Moore, who was a, a beautiful soul and was the founder of Ananda South Bay, uh, who left the body a number of years ago, but he put tremendous tapasya and devotion to get South Bay really going strong. Um, we were doing a satsang years ago, and he had, of course, a picture of Yogananda. And, and he said, when you look um, at the picture of the guru, don't, don't look at just a guy with, you know, um, darker complexion and long, dark hair and, um, and a robe. Look at him as a window into Divine Mother like looking as a, a view into the infinite. And it's just as when Pe um, Jesus asked the disciples, who am I? It's one, it's Peter who says, you are the Christ. So it's looking deeper in the masters, not the forms, not just the Christ, but the Christ consciousness. And that's within us. That's like the chakras, all the doors do open themselves. We awaken within. So it's, they love us so, so much. God loves us so much. It's not them that are punishing. They may give challenges. It's so just to be opening and just to be, as I said, like a child, ever receptive, and open.